Well, everyone, I actually recently installed Windows 10 on my MacBook and I actually had like a broken MacBook with like a broken screen that I had. It was totally functional. It was just the screen was messed up and I didn't have any use for it really. I was just kind of chilling with it. And I recently installed Windows 10 on it and I think it really breathed some new life into my device. I didn't really want to install it on my main device just because I didn't want to partition the storage and all that. But on this one, I honestly don't care. It's already broken for the most part. The screen's messed up. So I want to show you exactly how to install Windows 10 and really any other future Windows software on really any MacBook. Now, as of right now, the specific Mac models that are supported for Windows 10 are really any 2012 MacBook Airs or MacBook Pros, Mac Minis, iMacs, Mac Pros, all those different models. Those ones that are supported that are over the year 2012 can support Windows 10. So that's a really huge thing to note. I think other Windows versions are supported for lower end and older models than those, but but those are the bare minimums that you need for a Windows 10 device. Now the specific model that I put this on was a 2012 model. It was the MacBook Pro Retina, so that's the oldest model that's technically supported. And the process was super easy, it did not take that long at all. It just kind of took, really the longest part is downloading the software. Other than that, it's pretty much good to go. Now you need at least 64 gigabytes or more in order for this to get going. So if you have a 128 gig model like I do, you'll need to make sure that you have at least 64 gigabytes saved onto your device before you go in and partition and install Windows 10. Now another huge thing you have to keep in mind for older MacBooks such as mine, you will need an external USB drive in order to actually install this and it's going to need to be at least 16 gigabytes. So my 2012 model and every tutorial that I watched did not specify this so I was so confused but on my model, my 2012, I did need a USB flash drive. If you have a 2015 model MacBook Pro, Retina, Air, whatever the case is, or newer, then you won't necessarily need that USB drive because it has flash storage. But my specific models, I did need a USB drive, so that's one thing to note. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is download a Windows 10 disk image from Microsoft. Now I'll leave that link down in the description, you can get it from there. And basically once you're on the website, all you want to do is select Edition. You want to click Windows 10, you want to click Confirm. Then once that little pop-up comes up, you want to select the product language, which is going to be English. You want to scroll down, click Confirm, and it'll take like two seconds. And then you want to download the 64-bit download. Now you want to download that within 24 hours. And once you have that downloaded, all you really need to do now is go ahead and boot a boot camp that's already pre-installed into basically every single Mac. So you want to go up to the search bar and you, and you want to type in Boot Camp Assistant. And that'll go ahead and boot it up and it'll go ahead and boot up that software. Now once you boot it up, it'll go ahead and tell you when whether you need a USB driver or not. For me specifically, I did need one, but for most people, maybe you won't need it. Now, once you get through the little bit of setup, you'll see that you need to partition the Mac for it to have a Windows and for it to have the Mac OS system on it. Now, remember, like I stated, you need at least have 64 gigabytes saved on your MacBook. So you can partition about maybe like 30 gigs or 32, or whatever the standard size is. I think mine's about 32 to 40. It's somewhere near there. It's not that big. So you want to go ahead and set that up and you just want to go ahead and set up and go through the random setup. It's really, really basic. It'll go ahead and tell you at some point to load up that ISO file, but most of the time it already loads it up. So you're pretty much set. And then it'll go ahead and go through. You'll have to type in your password a couple of times here and there, but that's really basically the majority of the work. Really, Boot Camp Assistant will go ahead and take care of the rest of the work. It doesn't really take too much time after that. Now, when Boot Camp Assistant, and I keep calling it Boot Camp, but it's Boot Camp Assistant, once that finishes, your MacBook will go ahead and restart or your iMac, whatever the case is. And then the Windows installer will actually come up. Now this is super, super important. Once you get to the setup and you can go ahead and pause this video, it'll take like a couple seconds. It'll take for like a couple minutes to get through the setup and stuff. When you have to select the specific storage place where you want to install Windows at, you want to make sure that you click that boot camp partition and you want to click format that's right underneath it. So you'll see a little format button. You want to make sure you click it. Most of the time, maybe it'll go ahead and let you get through if you click next, but sometimes it'll tell you it cannot be installed there. What you want to do is you want to click format go through it and I'll go ahead and set right and that's pretty much good. Now at this point it's pretty basic. All you have to do is just keep clicking next and keep putting in all your type of information that you need. And you go ahead and keep clicking next and next and then eventually you'll get back into a screen that says okay we're installing updates this and that so it'll go ahead and take a couple seconds but but eventually once you're through the setup it, i'm not going to bore you showing you what i did you'll eventually get to the windows panel which is really cool now this is very very important as soon as you boot up that windows partition you want to make sure that you see that boot camp installer whatever that is and you want to make sure that you actually go ahead and install those specific updates you don't want to click that out you want to make sure you have those things updated because certain things won't necessarily work if you go through and just 
kind of use it without installing those specific things. For example, my network, I was not able to connect to a network as soon as I actually went through the setup. So I just clicked join next and I went through eventually, but you will actually have to go and install those later so you can get access to Wi-Fi and all those things from your Mac device, basically to get all the support that you can get from a device like this. So if that makes any sense. Now, like I said, I did run into a couple problems sometimes when I was in boot camp and I would go through for some reason, sometimes I didn't want to install this software onto my USB drive. So I just had to unplug it, plug it back in and kind of go from there. But it's really, really basic. It's really not that hard as people might even think it is. I thought it was hard until I did it and it really wasn't. So that's really pretty much the process. If you have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.